today we are going to try something a little bit crazy here in Europa Universalis 4. We're going to see what happens when occupying a province in war just gives it to the attacker. They will also receive a free corps and one infantry regiment in that province. Who do you think will be the top three great powers when it's all said and done? Leave your predictions in the comments below the video. And if you find yourself enjoying the video and you haven't already, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing for more fun content like this in the future. I should also note that I ran a quick script that I wrote that makes all of the rulers in the world aggressive military personalities. So you can see here, it says they will seek to expand aggressively at the expense of their neighbors and are more likely to go to war. So hopefully that will lead to a little bit of extra chaos. Nothing really to set up here, just to unpause. We have our first war here. Oh my goodness gracious, Sirhin just absolutely clapped Delhi. So take a look. What's gonna happen is, is they will occupy these provinces. They will get seated to them instantly as well as pop a regiment out of the ground. And then whenever they siege down their capital, they'll get occupied like this. And the reason being was because AI was declaring war, getting everything transferred over to them, and then they weren't getting any war score. So then they would just peace out with like these really weird borders. So this way it'll be a little more controlled and they'll have a little bit more say over the peace deal in the end of it. It seems that the Hundred Years War is on and take a look at that. Just like that, Alençon is now French. So for better or for worse, obviously they won't get as much war score, but they instantly get the income of those provinces. And there's also no AE associated with it either. Muscovy is very quickly annexing Novgorod. One foul swoop. Aragon has decided that they want to take back Naples as a personal union, but unless they can get some men over here, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. A little bit of chaos coming on over here as Byzantium is occupying some provinces in Poland. And then the AI goes and does weird wacky stuff like this. Like you've got France eating Provence, which is eating Portugal. These poor guys have been on this siege for so long. That's really bad luck. They've literally lost like 10 siege ticks here. Uh-oh, Stinky Castile's at war with some people over here and it looks like they're making some occupations. Portugal has been exiled to Madeira. So you can see here Muscovy has full annexed Novgorod as well as Ryzon and Odoyev. Iberia has become some absolutely disgusting border gore and I am here for it. I've never understood why they call it gore, if it's so beautiful. Uh-oh, stinky. Ming about to pop off on Oirat over here. Everybody gangsta till Ming starts marching 100,000 men into your land in 1452. And the locals just start saying, screw it, we'll join them. Now, I do have a failsafe here, and I didn't even localize it, but that's okay. This is essentially to help prevent nations from getting massive and like world conquesting, if it's even possible for the AI to do. But what this does is whenever they hit their governing capacity, they will gain some unrest, stability cost modifier, and minimum autonomy in their provinces. If they go 10 over, it will get worse. And if they go 20 over, it will get really worse. At this point, this will be six national unrest, 100% stab cost, and 50% minimum autonomy, as well as 0.2 devastation per month in every province that they own. So they'll essentially collapse. Obviously, as tech comes along and they're able to unlock more governing capacity, it won't be as big of a deal. Time for the per campaign Ottoman conquest of Constantinople. Byzantium's provinces were sieged back up here in Poland, so it looks like they're going to go extinct this time around as well. F in the chat for Byzantium. Or then you get funny stuff like this, where these guys are in a war with Ragusa, but Burgundy took the province and Ragusa sieged it back, so Ragusa took the province in Austria. This might be problematic. It might be problematic. We'll see. Looks like Mamluks got to war with QQ, ate a large chunk of them, and now they're like Pac-Man over here munching on the AQ. If the Mams can get big enough, they actually might be able to contest the Ottomans, which I don't know about you guys, but I always personally appreciate it when the Ottomans crumble. Just adds a little bit of variety. Obviously, the Ottomans are the strongest nation in the game when it comes to AI, so I'm always happy to see a little bit of variety. And as we're watching this, I am curious what kind of other stuff you guys would like to see. One that I have in the making, some people in my Discord made a mod, we are going to make it so AI is super aggressive and AE is reduced pretty heavily. So that way people will genuinely just be going to war and full annexing everybody else. Not really unlike this, but in a more controlled fashion, because obviously this is just chaos. So if you have a suggestion, feel free to leave it in the comments, because I do appreciate that. I read all my comments, of course, I don't get that many. And if you are enjoying, make sure you leave a like, because I appreciate that as well. And while you're down there, you should probably just subscribe, because I do put out multiple videos a week, and I put a lot of time and effort into them. So if you appreciate them and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Austria is not feeling so good. They have been cut in half by Burgundy. And it looks like the Danes are invading Scotland. Look at all of these wars, man. So many. That's why I set the leaders to be militarists, so you get chaos like this. Oh, yikes. Looks like France is having a good game. They even annexed the Balearic Isles. Timmy absolutely sprinting towards forming the Mughals. All they need is Delhi, and they can click the button. 
that would be an interesting development to say the least. Well, Oirat seems to have uh, migrated down into southern China. It does not look like we'll be seeing a Prussia this time around, or at least not from Brandenburg, because they were full annexed by Ansbach. All of this chaos is actually going to cause the HRE to basically get destroyed as all their provinces are being taken without even costing any aggressive expansion. And you see Platinate has been taken over by Burgundy. Lorraine has been taken over by France. Austria has been taken over by Venice and Burgundy. And it looks like the Ottomans are about to siege down Vienna. So it's anybody's game at this point. France expanding its influence here into Northern Italy as well. Austria has been annexed leaving Bohemia to be the next emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. And without Austria to defend them, Hungary is uh, falling pretty quickly to Poland. Uh-oh, looks like Moldavia was disloyal, and now they have Bohemia and a very beefy Muscovy supporting their independence. An inevitable clash of the titans coming up soon, TM. That's a little spooky, seeing the Ottomans here in uh, northern Italy. <laughs> and Poland took a huge chunk out of Hungary, safe to say that they are quite strong now. Funnily enough, it looks like the Mughals formed and then they actually lost their capital. So that's pretty weird. So the Mughals exist outside of India. Kind of funny. Oh, yo, look at this Ming, dude. Goodness gracious. There is no way that their governing capacity can really handle this. They're still doing okay. They're barely over. That's crazy, actually. And it seems that their aspirations for liberty boiled over and they are now at war. Though it looks like Poland is beating the tar out of them. Muscovy and Bohemia need to come to the rescue for them if they're going to survive. Yeah, you're going to see stuff like this where Lithuania will just piecemeal get sent over and added to the Russian Empire. And the more forts they occupy, the better because it makes Poland weaker. I'm actually very curious to see how this war goes over. Ah, yes, good old Bohemia controlling provinces in Lithuania. And don't forget Moldavia over here in White Ruthenia. Oh, yo, Muscovy is absolutely steamrolling through Sweden. That's so funny because Sweden was really disloyal as well. But now they're not, apparently. Yo, this is ugly. This is so gross. This is what we live for here. Bohemia, who is the emperor of the HRE, has been reduced to a one province miner here in Prague. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Just kidding. They're not a one province miner. Their capital is actually up here in Schleswig. Seems legit. Muscovy rocking a cool 112,000 men in the field. Versus Poland's 58. And the Mughals have been dismantled. Looks like the subjects declared their independence war. No surprise there. And Ming is having some issues with rebels. Mams and Otto still haven't duked it out yet. I'm really waiting on that one. It seems that Muscovy has separate pieced out, leaving Moldavia to their fate to most likely get annexed. But Muscovy made out like a bandit. They just took over half of Sweden, a ton of Livonia, most of the Baltics, like half of Lithuania, creating this just absolutely atrocious border gore along the way. Look at this diaspora of Bohemia. Bohemia, 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 Bohemia. <laughs> 30 years in and the great powers are France, Ming, Ottomans, Muscovy, Mamluks, Castile, Poland, and Ayutthaya. I stepped away from my computer for literally five minutes. And this is what I come back to. The Ottomans have annexed all of like Central Europe over here. <laughs> what in the absolute heck, man? India is just an absolute thunderdome. It's anybody's game at this point. And still having a standoff between the Ottomans and the Mams, though. With all this power base up here, I'm thinking the Ottomans are probably going to be able to roll the Mams at this point. Ming's name seems a little bit smaller here. Oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> An unlikely Meng Kwang popping out over here in South China and North China. And Korea blobbing a bit into Manchuria. Seems that Ottomans and France are trying to split Europe. 1499, and I do not see much colonization going on outside of a couple of provinces over here in the Caribbean by Castile. Who could France be at war with right now? Oh, oh, <laughs> let's see how this goes for them. Well, it definitely could have been worse. The Ottomans control a lot of the English Channel now, most of Northern Italy and most of Western Germany as well. And they've even got a couple of provinces here in France proper. Ottomans now at 2,559 development, with the second closest being Muscovy with a mere 1,477. But we also have the good old Livonian order here of uh, Southern Italy. That kind of stuff, in my opinion, is what makes this mod great. We have Biapas here in Steiermark. Korea has migrated across the sea and into Japan, and it looks like they're handedly winning it. Muscovy absolutely popping off. Once they form Russia, that should be a really big thing for them because more regiments means more ability to carpet siege, right? But remember, them being so far over their governing capacity is going to have major issues for them in the long term. And as you can see here, with them being so far over their governing cap, every province that they own will now be getting devastation monthly no matter what. Except for the ones that border forts, of course. Livonia is now Sicily. 
And we've got a demarcation line right here through central Germany. Looks like France is able to get a little bit of a power base back off of the ground, which is nice. England has converted Denmark into England 2 electric boogaloo. And Muscovy is absolutely explosive. Ming has just ceased to exist. Bengal, Korea, and Ayutthaya ate them all. And the Mams are doing quite good, comparable numbers to the Ottomans, so maybe I counted them out too early. Well, as you can see here, Russia did indeed form. Um, sadly, it's uh, not looking too good because the Ottomans have completely taken over Russia, and France for that matter, exiling France mostly to Portugal. Castile is trying not to move so as to not draw unnecessary attention to it so it doesn't get full annexed by Ottomans in one war. Korea having the game of their life going for the Chosun one. Speaking of the Chosun one, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you check out that video. It's going to be linked on the screen right now. This is a nice color. Wait a minute. Korean India. That's good. I like that. But as you can see here, the Ottomans are not feeling too good from all of these modifiers. As the devastation continues to go up, their country is going to get less and less useful, even though it's so big, because all these provinces are locked at minimum of 50 autonomy. Looks like Castile has been doing a bit of colonizing over here, though not a whole lot considering that it's already 60 years past the 1500s. But this is a strange color over here. What is... Oh no. Oh no. The Ottoman East Indies. Absolutely enormous. Take a look at this little guy right here. What nation do you think that is? If you guessed a Coptic Magdeburg, you would be correct. Ottomans having some rebel issues, to be expected. They're receiving the full brunt of the uh, governing capacity trigger modifiers. Pope Man is a one province miner up here in East Frisia. Here's a good one. Copenhagen, owned by Gazek Mook. It does appear that the Ottomans are definitely having some struggles with rebels over here. I think that being over their capacity is starting to really take a toll on them. As you can see here, they have no stability, no prestige, no legitimacy for some reason. They are going through internal conflicts and uh, it's not looking good for them. So it looks like the number one great power by almost double is about to collapse into something a lot less impressive. To put it into perspective, Castile has 311,000 and the Mamluks have almost 300,000 and the Ottomans have less than 50. Heck, even Great Britain has double what the Ottomans do. So if I had to guess, the Ottomans got punished too much by the triggered modifiers and crumbled, which is sad and all that. But when you take a look at what came out of it, do you guys know what that color is right there? Because that's a big old Swabia. Even better yet, they were formed by Constans, which makes it even better in my opinion. We also have the Dutch who popped out, probably from the disaster if I had to guess. Tons of French separatists, so we may actually see like a metropolitan France looking as French as ever. And would you look at those Mamluks, man. Goodness gracious, all the way to Siberia. A rare tag dominating the entire island of Borneo. You definitely don't see that very often. And of course, we have the Empire of the United States under the uh, De Valois, or however that family is pronounced, the France. They are, um... <clears throat> Excuse me? Paradox, please explain. There's a lot of things that I'll put up with in this game, but that is not one of them. Anyways, Castile dominating South America and Central America as usual, as well as West Africa by the looks of it. Though the Netherlands have a couple of provinces around the coast there. A wild Finland has appeared. Well, how the mighty have fallen. This is indeed the Ottomans capital here in the steppes. Britain has taken over most of Eastern Europe. We now have Bengali Balkans over here. We also have Bengali Ruthenia. Moravia has made an appearance. Swabia did the Anschluss, so that's pretty cool. France is now gone, split between the Netherlands, Britain, and Swabia. And America doing American things, I suppose. Though the border war with Florida is atrocious. The East is looking pretty interesting. Uh, Korea had a bit of a comeback, which is nice to see because they got exiled to Japan last I saw. Though it does look like we've got a uh, Sudanese Korea over here. I'm okay with that. I think that's pretty good. So forgetting the fact that AQ and Crimea exist up here in Karelia, I'd like to take a second to acknowledge the fact that we indeed now have a wild Germany that has appeared. Taking a look here, the Mamluks have definitely taken the lead, followed by Castile, Britain, Germany, Delhi, the Netherlands, Sunda, and Bengal. And if you take a look here... The total development of Ottoman provinces is three. One three dev province here in Dishaman Kuduk. <laughs> that genuinely makes me really happy to see, and I'm curious. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments down below. Well, we're going to call it here uh, because late game EU4 is insufferably slow, and uh, my speed 4 is running at like speed 2. So let's take a tour. We indeed have an Anglican Iceland here, Norway, revolutionary Sweden. 
Dutch Scandinavia, Karelia, Novgorod, as well as Revolutionary Great Britain. This may actually be the most disgusting, stupid looking revolutionary flag I have ever seen in my life. My eyes cannot unsee it and now yours can't either. Netherlands have looked roughly the same for about 100 years, and Spain looks like they ate most of Swabia. We have a revolutionary Germany here, but yeah, they've been cut down to size. We got a sneaky uh, Cyprus hanging out here in uh, southern Czechia as well as northern Austria. Moravia exists today. Bosnia. Hungary is an OPM in Croatia. Pisa exists. The Mamluks kept their dominance throughout the entirety of the late game. And Delhi's borders with the Mamluks look pretty comparable to what they did for the most part. Here's a look at Australia and New Zealand, Southeast Asia, North America, very Spanish, South America, also very Spanish, Kilwa in Southern Africa, as well as Madagascar. Even the AI doesn't care about this boring area over here, so they left them alone. We have Spain over here, and the great powers are Spain with a whopping 10,000 development, followed by Mamluks with eight and a half, and then it drops all the way down to 2.6 thousand for Delhi, the Netherlands, Sunda, Great Britain, Kilwa, and Kutai with 447 dev. Spain, obviously the best bet for economic hegemon for the world. That's appropriate. And I certainly hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, again, leave a like on the video. I do appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't already. Always open to suggestions. So if you got one, feel free to leave it in the comments below the video. On screen right now, YouTube is recommending some videos that it thinks that you will like. And I tend to agree. If you're interested in joining my cool community, you can check out the Discord, my subreddit, or my Twitter. They're all linked in the description. But until next time, stay chill.